Hey everybody, it's Dr. Meg Dipico from Jared Small Vet and Polly.com. This is Hank. We have been talking about Hank and intervertebral disc disease, which is his problem. Um, there's a couple other videos available on him, and I have some really good information on my blog, Diary of a Real Life Vet, so you can visit there anytime. He is 10 days post being found um, lateral recumbent, unable to stand, unable to walk, unable to move, in terrible, terrible pain. He has a cervical disc, which is his problem. So he's really got, um, he's got paresis on all four legs and it was up until today he was um, he was unable to turn his head at all so he has come a long way in 10 days but it has been a long hard 10 days um, I know a lot of people deal with this disease because they can't afford the surgical options even if you can afford the surgical options these guys are a lot of intensive work to get them up again um, so I'm gonna go over with you kind of how to handle your pet if he's if they have intervertebral disc disease so his disc problem was here in his neck um, he was painful really if I touched him anywhere especially if I went anywhere ne near his neck but because he has to get carried out to go to the bathroom he's got carried got to get moved um, and rotated to make sure that he's not down on one side all the time we really had to start doing it lots of tips that you can do I was always talking to him some of these guys they they know as you come near them that it's gonna hurt so they're very reluctant for you to come near them I know a lot of people are really afraid of hurting their dog but you still have to handle them um, so as hard as it is to hear them cry and scream and be in pain you still have to manage them at home you have to keep them clean you have to keep them dry they are urinating and defecating all over themselves um, I see a lot of dogs especially who are down from disc disease and they are covered in urine scald that really can't happen the minute they pee they have to be cleaned up we've had him on pee pads really for the last 10 days every time he pees I bring him into the bathtub we clean him off really well I dry him off really well and I don't want to see any yellow urine scald or because you're gonna get skin infection after that so they are definitely a lot of work um, but you can do it there's a lot of support out there for you and certainly talk to your vet a lot so one of the things I did um, some of the tips that I've got for handling your dog at home you know every time I was coming up to him I would talk to him so there's a lot of talking hey 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 pet his head let him know you're here um, I was rubbing to see how painful he was but so because he had a cervical lesion I was rubbing his neck I knew the minute I touched him how difficult it was gonna be to pick him up based on how he was responding to me touching him um, the other thing is you really need to use as much support as possible so I'm coming here's his here's his his um, humerus so the forearm and then here's his shoulder blade and then here's his spine I really want to come underneath the shoulder blade and pick him up so I'm trying to support as much as his head and the upper body as possible. When you're coming, when you're picking up from the back end, you I come in between the back legs and I'm supporting the pelvis. So the pelvis is attached to the spine. Um, so to pick him up, you know, I'm trying to pick him up evenly. So he's already wincing a little bit. And I'm trying to pick him up, you know, so that he doesn't have, he's not throwing his weight around. Um, so get under him as much as you can and pick him up. So pelvis and then, you know, support him. The other thing is you can wrap him in a towel and sort of use that as your stretcher to pick him up. That works really well. So he's doing much, much better, thankfully. Um, but use the towel to sort of support him and then pick him up from there. You know, make sure you're on solid ground. Make sure you're comfortable picking your pet up. Make sure they're comfortable picking you up. You know, even with him being a very, very good dog, he was biting because he was so painful. Sometimes we have to put a muzzle on them to move them just to get them safely to be moved. Um, you know, he's getting better now so that I can pick him up, but I'm still, I'm always supporting him and I'm always making sure that I'm not doing it in a painful way. Um, some of the other tips at home, keep him rotating from side to side, keep him super clean, make sure he's eating and drinking, make sure you offer him water because they're so painful, they're panting a lot, because they're panting a lot, they're um, losing moisture, and they need to be drinking a lot. So I'm offering him water like every couple of hours. Times when he's moaning or trembling or quivering or seeming really unhappy, some of the things that we did, you know, I would bring him food, I would bring him water, I would make sure that he was clean and dry, and then sometimes it's just rotating him. He's been lying on one side for so long that he's getting sick of lying there. Um, so we carried him everywhere, where, everywhere we went, um, because he's not mobile, I'm not so worried about him getting up and walking around. He can't get up and walk around. You know, we were always talking to people about keeping them on cage rest. So that's a big dog crate that's really cushioned and he just stays in there so that he can't get up and hurt himself because he's so ataxic.
Um, stay tuned for the next video. We're going to do, go do some physical therapy. Um, I also have videos on the medications that he's given, what to do for the first day or so, and then what happens if you find your dog down and out or lateral recumbent, unable to move, and your vet suspects IVDD. Um, if you have any questions, you can find me anytime at pobly.com. Say bye, Hank.